In this video, we'll be looking at 10 spells in Baldur's Gate 3 that are weird, and weird for the fact that they do something unique, or they're uniquely bad. Let's get this list started with Shape Changer. Shape Changer allows you to transform yourself into a Blue Jay for up to 5 turns. Surprisingly, this is not a Druid ability. Instead, it's exclusive to the Transmutation Wizard. It's also a bit different from the Druid's Wild Shapes because this spell requires concentration and does not allow you to speak with animals. As a Blue Jay, you have 5 health points, the ability to fly, and a beak attack, which isn't even usable because your ability to attack is blocked in this form. If the spell was available at lower levels, it could have been decent for movement, but the earliest you can actually get this spell is level 10, so by that point you have access to many other superior movement abilities. Casting this spell changes your character size to tiny, but you still can't use it to enter the burrow holes which are made specifically for tiny sized characters. And any attempts to use a door with a loading screen or loot objects is unexplainably blocked. Since the spell has no spell slot cost and also no cooldown, it's not like it's terrible to use, but due to its many strange restrictions, it feels like it was just added last minute and forgotten about by the developers, which is why it deserves a spot on this list. Now at number 9, we've got the Grasping Vine. For the cost of a spell slot and concentration, you can summon a vine with 3 maximum health points which has no attack and only one ability, Grasping Pull. Grasping Pull does no damage, but can pull something 6 meters towards the vine. Because it requires a 4th level spell slot to cast, the earliest level you can even use this is at level 7, which is surprising because even if this was available at level 1, I don't think anyone would use it. One of the weirdest parts of the Grasping Vine is that when you change the difficulty from Explorer to Tactician, this minion's health points actually increase, which is not normal behavior for player controlled characters. Usually your health will drop when you turn up the difficulty. The Grasping Vine is also clearly not intended to be able to move, but it can drink a speed potion to move around, and it can even equip some weapons giving it the ability to attack. Probably the strangest thing about the vine is that when you attack it, the combat log shows that it's also being hit by the Shadow Curse, which is normally a mechanic exclusive to certain areas in Act 2. It makes me curious if a spell like this could have some hidden easter egg attached to it, where if we summon four of this useless tentacle in Helsin's bedroom, we'll get some legendary weapon. So Larian, I'm holding out for a feature like that in the Enhanced Edition. Next on the list, Contagion. Contagion is one of the most confusing spells in the game. It has five different versions of the same spell, which are all slightly different, but essentially you cast a melee range debuff on the enemy to cause them to get this advantage on their attacks and one of their stats saving throws. If they manage to fail three constitution saving throws out of five turns, then they will be cursed with a permanent debuff. These debuffs are powerful effects and can do some pretty cool stuff, like making your character look super bloody or be stunned whenever they take damage. So as far as spells go, it's got a pretty unique effect. But there are one of its five spells in particular that I found quite interesting. Mindfire. This spell effect claims that when it succeeds, the target will be befuddled which makes them confused and not able to be controlled. But when you cast this on your own characters, you actually get to keep control of that character, but it makes them hostile to your own party. So by using this, you're able to enter combat anywhere using this seemingly unintended effect, and it makes it possible to test some in-combat required spells like Enrage. And this character can also attack NPCs without being accused of a crime because in the game's AI, it thinks that the character is mind-controlled to attack random targets. Overall, this interaction alone makes this spell one of the weirdest spells in the game. Number 7 is a shared one, because these are actually two weird spells, but they're weird for the exact same reason. The spells are Chill of the Mountain and Touch of the Storm, which are exclusive to the Way of the Four Elements Monk. Now if you're an experienced player of this game, you might have looked at these spells and thought, wait a minute, I know those spells. That's Ray of Frost and Shocking Grass, but that does more damage, so those are better, which is only partially true. Let me explain why. The earliest point in the game that you can have access to these two spells is at level 3, and while they do have potential to roll for more damage than the cantrips, they also have a cost of one key, which is basically the spell slot for the monk. So for the possibility to deal two extra damage, they're spending a spell slot when other classes would do it for free, which doesn't really seem worth it. Worst of all, at level 5, these two spells do not upgrade like cantrips do. So once you reach level 5, a cantrip with no resource cost is dealing much more damage than these. So yeah, these spells are a little bit better for levels 3 and 4, but that's it. Honestly, the entire Way of the Four Elements Monk subclass is full of oddities like this. For example, their version of Fireball is the exact same spell, but it has a different sound effect attached to it. And considering the subclass is called the Four Elements, why does the subclass only use three elements for all of their spells? Just air, fire, and water. Where is the fourth element, Larian? The D&D version of the subclass says that it should have earth spells. It feels like because the other two subclasses of Monk were so good, Larian just forgot about this one. For this reason, I have to say that all of these spells are quite unearthly. Anyways, back to the list. At number 6 is Flesh to Stone, which allows you to consume a level 6 spell slot to attempt to turn your target permanently into stone. The spell requires the target to fail 4 constitution saving throws in a row, but if it succeeds, they will be petrified. In my opinion, it's one of the coolest spells in the game, while simultaneously being one of the worst spells in the game. One of the strangest parts of this spell is that you can cast it on a target outside of combat, and they don't seem to get mad at you for doing it. 
give you an idea of just how rare it is that the spell even works, I had to save scum 11 times before I got it to work even once on Asterion here, who had just 14 constitution. And 14 is just kind of an average number for the point at which you'd unlock this in the game. This spell can even target objects like doors, furniture, and chests, but it has no chance of ever succeeding, meaning you can just misclick and waste your level 6 spell slot. It's also important to be careful of who you cast this petrifying spell on, because you could lock your game if you petrified important story characters. The spell isn't entirely unique, as there is a scroll that you can get in Act 2, which can turn characters into gold, but in order to get that you'd have to donate 5,000 gold to this gold addicted NPC. But it is just a cooler version of the same spell, which makes these two spells the only two permanent crowd controls in the game. But I'm not really sure why you'd need to do that. My advice for you is just stick to real crowd controls, like Otto's Irresistible Dance or Hold Monster, which are much more reliable effects. Finally, a good spell on the list, at number 5, we have Divine Intervention. Divine Intervention is available at level 10 to any cleric. It allows you to pick between a high damage AoE nuke for 8 to 80 damage, a spell to revive all nearby allies while simultaneously using long rest to restore all of their spell slots, a spell to summon a chest full of items including a random assortment of potions and camp supplies, and lastly, a legendary mace with pretty good damage and an ability to heal your whole team over time. But the catch is that you can only ever use this once per character. But this one's pretty cool because you can get it on any character, even on hirelings, if you wanted multiple uses. Then you can just summon items for a decent amount of late game potions and camp supplies, or even dual wield the legendary mace this way. There are so many unique things that this spell provides, such as being the only way to restore all spell slots during combat. And because all of the spell options here are viable, it's not always an easy decision to make when to use it. This makes me wish there were more spells like this in the game, but until then, divine intervention is certainly unusual, in a good way. Next up, Shaping the Ice. Remember when I said the Four Elements monks have some unique stuff? Well, they're back again with Shaping the Ice, a spell which can conjure a block of ice for up to 10 turns. You can summon them and create stairs to get over walls, or block off doorways with it. But I can't answer why it's exclusive to monk, or why it has a resource cost. But if you stop to consider that crates basically do the exact same thing as this, you start to even question its purpose in the game. Shaping the Ice does have one abnormal ability though, the ability to block arrows and spells, something that almost all other in-game objects cannot do. If you don't believe me, I'll show you. Here's two crates in a door, and as you can see, arrows and spells can pass directly through the crate. However, if we block this door with blocks of ice, you'll see that spells and arrows can no longer pass through, which makes this spell strangely unique. I do wish this spell was just a cantrip given to more classes though, because I'd probably use it a lot more if it had no resource cost so I could go exploring. At number 3, we have Odaluke's Freezing Sphere. The spell's description says it allows you to create a ball of turning ice that can be launched instantly to generate a frosty explosion or stored for later use. But what does that really mean? It basically lets you summon an explosive, the same as the other in-game explosives act, directly into your inventory. But this one is made of ice. You can throw this orb to deal heavy damage, or even summon a mage hand to do it for you. But where this spell gets really interesting, is that you can pickpocket a target and place this object into their inventory. Then after 10 turns, it will automatically detonate, which is not only a unique way of dealing damage, but it's also very powerful. You could also just leave the orb on the ground nearby the enemies for a similar effect, but that doesn't quite invoke the same Hitman level style of feelings. Because it unlocks such an unusual way to play the game, it had to be included on this list. In my opinion, the second weirdest spell in the game is Enthrall. Do any of you actually know what Enthrall does? How about I read you the description to see if it helps. For the cost of a level 2 spell slot, you reduce a creature's peripheral vision and make it look at you. So yeah, the description doesn't really explain why or when you would want to use this. To me, it sounded like I could use it in combat and force the enemy to look at me or target me, right? Kind of like a cool taunt spell. But in reality, that's not what it does. All this spell does is reduce their sight cone to a small area and force them to look at you every turn when outside of combat only. What is the purpose? Why would they add this to the game in this state? Technically, I guess you could use it for stealing, but in reality, you can just cast Fog and it blinds them anyway. Fog also does a better job of blocking their vision, and it's a lower level spell. Enthrall does nothing, and somehow it's a spell that evades everyone's top 10 worst spells in the game list. It's so weird, it's like people don't even know the spell exists. It's only usable by warlocks and bards, but it should be used by no one. In the D&D 5e version of the game, the way it's supposed to work is similar to how the perform action works in the game, where it causes the enemies to come up to you and watch you. Except, instead of all targets in the area being forced to watch you, you'd be able to distract specific targets to look at you, which could maybe have a niche use in the game if it did that. But as is, it's beyond weird that the spell even exists. And if you have ever used this spell in your game, please tell me why in the comments below. I really can't think of any good use for this. And finally, the weirdest spell in Baldur's Gate 3, Summon Shovel. And no, it's not that type of shovel. If you weren't aware, you can go to the basement of the Blighted Village to find a scroll next to the Poo Scraper, which can be used to permanently have the ability to summon the cheeky closet, Shovel. 
This minion even has an achievement attached to it for the players who did this. But what makes this spell a little bit different is that it can only be learned from the scroll, and not just by wizards. Sorcerers and warlocks can also learn the spell just by casting it and then speaking with the creature. Shovel has so many inappropriate and strange voice lines that it makes me wish I could meet its old master in the game and ask who hurt them. <laughs> If you change your class after learning this spell through the dialogue options, then the spell will remain in your spellbook, giving you the ability to summon the Quasit on any class. It's not any better than the regular version of the spell, but it's pretty neat to start combat and have your minion run out there and yell that it's fisting time. And that will wrap up this list of the 10 weirdest spells in Baldur's Gate 3. If you think I missed any weird spells, please let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel because there's more coming soon. And as always, thanks for watching. Proxy out.